Doug Wiley with Blue Help. Kuule. Yes. Yesterday, we had the opportunity to sit in a room with a group of women, brave, fantastic women, who are survivors of an officer death by suicide. Mm -hmm. Very difficult presentation to sit through at times because of how powerful and emotional it was. But there were some really important takeaways, and I wondered what some of your takeaways were from that from that meeting. Um, well, first of all, I was grateful for the presentation because, um, like Karen said in the class, you have to make sure that people are aware of what's happening. You know, there's no... It's a tough subject, but unfortunately, there's no sugarcoating about it. Um, the best way to bring awareness is to be very transparent, straightforward, and mm -hmm. to tell it like it is, because otherwise, it'll be minimalized, and it shouldn't be. You know, it's, it should be something that people take a good look at and really focus on. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that from what I took from the class, um, coming forward as a student of mental health, I saw lack of support. The important thing I felt for those women were if there was support before the suicide, before it even happened, then maybe it could have been prevented. We don't know. The, but it sounded like the fact that there was no support, it kind of changed things. And still the culture, even with this knowledge that we have in the last decade or decade and a half of mm -hmm. recognition of PTSD or PTSI, recognition of the need for mental health and the, and the need to even just have someone you can talk with as a friend or a pastor or you know a priest or someone who you can trust and, and get some of that dirty stuff, that luggage that you're carrying, uh, you know, that... that Glass have, have half water, full, yeah. half full of water. <laughs> Get that off your your shoulders, then you can help to destigmatize, right? If if we can yes. destigmatize in law enforcement, getting that kind of help, how oh, would we yeah. go about doing that? Got to change the culture. Yeah, that's that's. I feel like that's my mission now is to normalize the need for mental health. Mm -hmm. It's okay to ask for help, and we've all been through issues it's not something unusual it's not something just for the profession it's something that is unique to the profession mm -hmm. but it's not police officers or law enforcement officers aren't the only people who are suffering from it mm -hmm. there's so many other people who have different types of trauma mm -hmm. every single day and the best way that we could help them or support them is to communicate mm -hmm. so not only communicate our support for them and have them feel comfortable enough to come to us, but have them communicate to us what what is happening. Right. You know, and I think that um, with that open communication, then that'll just spark up the conversation that needs to be had. One of the other things that I got from the presentation and from my work generally with Blue Help is that in the aftermath of a law enforcement officer's death by suicide, there's a complete abandonment of the family, of mm. anyone who's associated with that officer. And people say, hey, we, we're a family. We're going to continue to support you. But, you know, the health benefits go away. And it, but no one calls. No one sa everyone says, hey, I'll be, your, I'll be your dad, you know, from here on out. And they don't. Yeah. And what can we do to help change that culture? It's, it's a slippery slope, only because... I feel that a lot of people are uncomfortable with it because they aren't exposed to it, because they don't want to talk about it, mm -hmm. because it's an uncomfortable situation. Like, I just came from a class that was talking about death notification. It's not even about, you know, suicide or anything. It's death notification to the family. Mm -hmm. And there's only three people. Mm -hmm. Death is a very uncomfortable subject for many people. Especially, um, I've noticed especially in people who are sworn to protect mm -hmm. because they feel they need to protect people. What can we do to help change the culture of th that, that abandonment of the families or the, 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 the need for us to actually be the family to a, a, a widow or a widower mm -hmm. who's lost their, their spouse, their loved one to death by suicide? What, in the class, um, in Karen's class, it was also mentioned that how would you treat your family? Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't, I mean, some families, it's still a shameful thing. Suicide is very embarrassing for some, shameful for others. It's 
a lot of people don't understand it. They think the person was, you know, afraid or a wussy or whatever terminology they want to use. But maybe they're scared of it themselves right. or maybe they're close to it themselves and it's that separation that kind of causes them to be like hey we're here for you because that's what you're supposed to say mm -hmm. but then the follow-through is like uh no yeah yeah <laughs> thank you very much for your thoughts and your time today oh thank you for having me <laughs>